Hey everyone, thank you for listening to another episode of Spoiler Force Podcast. You can find more episodes on Apple Podcasts, SoundCloud, or YouTube. Don't forget to subscribe and make sure to follow Spoiler Force Podcast on Facebook. What's good everybody, this is Austin from Platinum Podcast and you're listening to Spoiler Force Podcast. Episode 53 of Spoiler Force Podcast. My name is Ricky and thank you for tuning in. So this episode, I'm very excited to have another podcaster as a guest on this show. And the reason I reached out to this guy was because we had similar goals for what we want on a podcast. And especially when it comes to like self-expression, um, passion, and just creativity. And just overall, just talking about topics that we enjoy as uh, content creators. So just let me introduce my guest here, Austin of Platinum Podcast. Thank you for doing this, bro. Hey, thanks for having me, man. I I got in touch with your podcast because I was just going through like YouTube and stuff and seeing, because I love seeing other Hmong content creators when it comes to podcasting because I know Mm -hmm. podcasting itself is something that's trending. You know, it's different from radio. Um, Yeah. Some episodes are pre-recorded, some are live. So the thing like what draws people into it is the idea of just, conversating and uh I, yeah. I think you've made some great points in some of your other previous videos and even your uh, most recent one you did yesterday uh discussing about what you'd like to talk about when it comes to topics is just um being able to express and talk about your passions you know and i think that's what really drew your content um uh, for me we have the same idea of what we'd like now mm-hmm. What are your uh, thoughts on just podcasting in general? Like, what kind of got you into the whole the whole content of it? So the whole thing is pretty much like, like uh, in my latest video, I talk about how there, I had so many passions, but then like there was one thing that stuck out from all those was just talking and conversating with people. So it just kind of like um, hit it at the right time where podcasting started becoming popular and more mainstream. And on YouTube and stuff, so I just kind of like put the two together and just, you know, this is like kind of the perfect time. It's kind of like following the trend, but it's going to be here for a while, you know, so uh, it was just a perfect time for me to get into the podcast and switch up my content just like I always do. Uh, if you do go through um, my channel, uh, I switched it up a lot, which was pretty bad, but then like right now I finally have something secure and something that I won't be switching, you know, so. Uh, I, I saw a lot of the previous content when, when it came from uh, hair product reviews, which I also use Bloomon too. I, I think uh, that product's really good. Mm-hmm. Um, I also seen you do like shoe reviews and uh, fashion um, stuff like that. I, I'm not too big into shoes though, but I, I thought it was cool to, to see you like talk about Yeezys and like talk about all, all these other shoes because I don't really see among people um, review shoes. I just usually see them post up that they got a certain yeah. type of shoe, <laughs> but they never uh, like review it. So I thought, yeah. I thought what you did was different. But for my podcast too, is like what I did was uh, I started with a lot of movie reviews and anime talk and comic book talk, which I still do from time to time. But mm-hmm. this whole thing with like guests and talking about passion and creativity and self expression, um, found myself repeating over and over again just through whether I was editing or talking with guests, like th- that was like the, the the core of this podcast that I'm doing. So I think for 2020, this was what I wanted to share. And so I think with having guests like you and like these other previous guests or even the guests that I have lined up after, um, there's like this centerpiece that kind of keeps you uh, anchored. You know, I, I think for you, I think it's great that you found something to help anchor your content. I really enjoyed what you have to say too. And you know, um, what other podcasts did you listen to to help kind of motivate you? Because, like, for me, I, I, lo- I love, like, uh, Joe Rogan and, uh, you know, uh, Timothy mm-hmm. Delegato's uh, yeah. a podcast and David So. It's like, what, what other content helps you to keep your content going? Obviously, like, those were my biggest podcasts, too. We don't see, like, other Hmong people making it big growing up, you know? So we had to lean towards, like, the other Asian YouTubers, Timothy Delegato, David So and JK, uh, the Just Kidding people, you know? So I think that played a big part in what I wanted to do because they weren't really afraid of just being themselves. And that really got me thinking, like, how come nobody 
how come there's nobody that talks about real stuff? I know for a fact that like Hmong people go through, you know, Hmong Hmong kids or like Hmong teenagers or just growing up being Hmong is like hard enough because you have to first you have to respect your parents and you have to respect what they say and trying to live off their dream all through you at the same time living your dream you know so that puts a lot of pressure into us as uh, Hmong people growing up so I thought that like it's just hard for people to uh, find their passion because they might not have time to think about their passion you know so I think that for sure that thing is like the one thing that drives me the most is just making sure that Hmong people or just people in general like make time for yourself you know, it's like sometimes it's okay to be selfish. Sometimes it's okay to say no to other people because you're making time for yourself, making making sure that you have that uh, self-awareness, you know, and finding your own passion, finding your own hobbies and stuff. So I think that was the one thing that really pushed me to uh, create this uh, platform for myself just to get um, the thoughts out there because I don't think anybody really talks about it. I mean. There, for sure, people want to talk about it, but I think you have that self doubt, like, oh, nobody's gonna listen to me. You, you so think it's think, because, like, I'm sorry to cut you off, but you think no, it's no, because, yeah. like, uh, Hmong people being raised so conservatively that kind of affects what we think when it comes to chasing our passions or to, especially like when it comes to entertainment and media. You know, you don't mm-hmm. see a lot of Hmong kids or Hmong folks chasing that opportunity until like recently, just now. You know, so yeah, I, do you think like being conservative kind of held us back as a community instead of like going out of our box and like being just more open about i guess yeah be, being open about oneself you know like just saying here i am you know this is what i'm about and i'm not gonna let like traditions or even religion hold me back type thing yeah uh that plays a big part of it right because nobody wants to disrespect their parents you know Hmong, Hmong people, uh, white people, black people, Indian, you know, it doesn't really matter who you are. You just don't want to disrespect your parents. And growing up, you look up to your parents. So obviously, as refugees, right, they came here to give us a better life. You know, everybody's heard that story of, you know, crossing the Mekong River for you to have a better life. And you feel bad, right? You have that guilt. Well, if I do what I want to do, it's going to make my parents feel like they wasted this opportunity for us you know I think it's just at the end of the day I feel like parents just want you to be happy and successful whether it's education through education or um, being like a doctor or engineer or a lawyer or just being happy with where you are or in your eyes you see that is successful and parents I think um, will kind of just lean towards it and say okay if you're happy then I'm happy at the end of the day yeah i think um parents expressing their their emotions to kids i i, I don't know if for most Hmong kids but for, for me growing up my parents were a bit more um they were more westernized more modern you know because like they were young mm-hmm. when they were married so they didn't really go through too much of the old traditions uh, i know some people and even close friends of mine whose parents still like run the house like as if it's like old school you know like there's a lot yeah. of respect and a lot of uh, a lot of old traditions that are uh, given to yeah. yeah you know they're passed on to the family yeah. hard core deep down so like yeah from, something like you feel you can't uh like get away from you know yeah yeah so for yeah. me for, for me i don't really relate so much to that but i do see how it does affect like a lot of content creators who are in a Hmong household and who still try to hold up those traditions and you know you see nowadays a lot of Hmong folks are i guess you could say mixing Hmong culture with different uh, ideas and different um, aspects of life from different cultures and you know as america is a big melting pot you know i, I feel like a yeah. lot of the older uh, Hmong folks are not afraid but they don't want to lose that root of just knowing yeah, exactly. that you're Hmong. you know so I, I feel like that kind of holds a lot of us back when it comes to like just trying to pursue what we want and yeah uh, you know it, it, trying it, it new things or trying to get out of like that the Hmong community bubble you know, I, I think it's great, like, how we do have a lot of artists there who are slowly breaking the trends and, you mm-hmm. know, breaking down these barriers. I've said this time and time again on the podcast, you know, Kalia Universe is one of the biggest um, Hmong artists out there who is doing things that's outside the norm when it comes to a Hmong artist or content creator, yeah. you know, and, and she's showing uh, a lot of young, youthful kids that you don't have to just 
be something or like something that's already set for you. You can choose to, uh, to use your opportunities to be an artist or content creator or whatever you'd like to be. And with social yeah. media too, I think that's really helped out the Monk community, especially showing that you know there's a lot of artists out there or a lot of content creators or even podcasters out there. And yeah, um, exactly. Yeah, you, it, it, it's. And what's crazy is because of social media, that's, that's how I was able to find find like a lot of Hmong podcasters. And it felt good to know that I was like, shit, you know, I'm not the only one who's trying yeah. to do this. <laughs> yeah, for real. I was like, man, am I the only one out here? <laughs> I, I didn't get into podcasting until like 2016, but I was only introduced to it because I had a friend who was really into Kevin Smith's podcast. Oh, and okay. My boy Andrew, he's uh, he's the guy who's actually in charge of the Pop Luck page that's on Facebook. Um, oh, gotcha, Before man. I branched off and made my own but like he's uh he he's the one that you know showed me podcasting and he's the one that was like yo Rick we should do a podcast it's easy all you do is just talk to the microphone and record it and upload it and i thought it was crazy at first you know when i tried to do it i, I felt so weird we were doing it with no camera so we were mm-hmm. just looking at the floor or something you know trying to keep our minds busy while staying on topic and um yeah and it's from then on i just kind of understood what podcasting was and it wasn't until last year that i fully kind of realized like man, this is what I want to do. This is something that I can fully express myself and nerd out with certain things because like, yeah. cause like, you know, there's certain topics that I like that I can't talk to some of my friends about. So podcasting was helping me to, uh, just vent and let it all yeah, out. It's like, a, <laughs> it's like a therapy session, you know? <laughs> yeah. You know, so I think that's what podcasting is so good for. And, and then, again, like I was saying, it's so great to see, you know, content creators like you and, um, guys like, um, the guy I'm recording with, um, William Moore next week too. He's a podcaster too. And oh, okay. Yeah. He's going to be on the podcast uh, soon. And you know, there's like so many other podcasters out there and I think it's crazy to see like, okay, so there, that we do have a Hmong podcasting community out there. Um, yeah, that, that's, that's really interesting too. Cause I didn't even know there was anybody outside of just you and me, you know, there yeah. was one that, uh, just, uh, started, I think, it's called the what is it social exchange project something like that it's based in eau claire and i live in eau claire for school so i'm really excited uh, for them to come on to like the uh community that we have already and yeah like it's great to see other people trying new things are, are you currently i guess the way how you're doing your podcast i know you were doing video and audio like half and half are you still doing that or did you kind of just like uh, yeah set it aside um, well for the now? thing is because of because we're quarantined and stuff, I had to come back home in uh, Wisconsin, like in Appleton, for my parent with my parents, my siblings and stuff. And the reason why I did the half and half was because I used to record my content with um, the the Canon um, one of the Power Shots, the Mark II. Um, so it could only record for like 15 minutes, and usually my 15 16 minutes and usually my podcast i like to make it around 45 to an hour so that's why the, it always cut in half i've never done anything with the camera yet because I, I for me it's it's a bit um i'm still trying to learn how to do editing with just audio itself you know and um mm-hmm. if you've seen um lp's podcast the uh was a snack and chat he he has like two episodes out um mm-hmm. he does the camera stuff too but i think he right now he was only using one but i do want to experiment though like eventually kind of like uh, i don't know if you've seen dumbfounded's podcast fun of dumb how, yeah how he has the how multiple he, camera he angles yeah yeah but then that's a lot of cameras yeah <laughs> that's a lot of money <laughs> i like his setup it's very simple i mean just like three cameras and then on his or the recording screen you know they show the split screen i kind of like that setup so I, I think it's great that you do still try to implement some sort of video aspect that way your audience can kind of see like who you're talking to and yeah who you have on the show but um have you considered doing like what i do too like just calling your guest or would you, do you just prefer having them in person um yeah like for me I'm I'm not picky, but then, like, for me, when I conversate with people, I like to see them because I want to see, like, their their uh, facial expressions or, like, their body language and stuff like that. I like to observe a lot, so that's how, like, I can say something back, you know, or, like, how to react to it. And because of you, like, we're talking, and I have no idea, like, what you're looking at or, like, um, if you've been paying attention, you know. But then if we're face-to-face, I know for a fact that you'll be looking – at me when we talk you know what i mean right yeah so that way you, yeah. you can kind of get like a uh 
I guess, you know, physically like, they're in tune with the conversation. Yeah, and, yeah. like, it's just more, like, intimate, you know? Um, yes. Yeah, so, I mean, like, I'd rather, I'd rather talk on the phone compared to text, but then if we had a choice, I'd rather just talk in person because it's just so much easier that way. Yeah, you can uh, express your feelings through, like, your voice and um, uh, how to exaggerate and stuff like that, but then, like, I'd rather just see you, you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think you know I, I've had some experiences where you know, I do have some guests in person too. Like usually it's just like Michigan guests. Um, I did have to do like a video chat with some guests too because they didn't feel comfortable with just with just the phone or audio. Call. Oh, okay. So I did have to do that, which I don't mind. Um, I only address the audio call because it's more simple. I guess you can say it like yeah. it's, it's easier. I find it more easier to just do audio because that way you know you don't have to dress up or look decent on the camera or yeah see you know. like th- like that that's why it limits me with like having guests and stuff like if you notice like the guests so far i've had uh the very first one he was my cousin so i mean we live in the same town <laughs> so it was real easy and then rick dalton uh he lived in the same town as i did too so it was real easy and then the other guy um he was in eau claire where i go to school anyways so it was easy just to go but then like if if i was to do like with you right yeah, for sure, we should be collaborating, like, in the future and stuff, too. If we were to do one, like, face-to-face, like, it'd be so hard for me to travel there or for you to travel to where I was because, like, it's so far already, you know, and it's such, like, a hassle, right, to contact people and, like, hey, can you drive over here? And that would be, like, a whole day <laughs> yeah, even with just like, driving. Yeah, even contacting people who live in the same state, like, it's already not too much of a hassle, but the fact that you have to ask them, like, hey, did you want to meet here or... Do you want me to meet up with you? Because usually for me, I, I, I extend my greetings to the guest, and I'm like, you know, you can just either stay home or we can meet somewhere. I'll, I'll go to you kind of thing, you know? Cause I, yeah. Because, mm-hmm. like, with, with LP, when I was recording with him, I, I told him to uh, just stay home. I was like, you know, because you have a studio already anyway. Um, and yeah, I, that's I don't, true. I don't want you to drive out to where I live or come out to where I live. I, I can just go to you to make it easier for you. That way uh, – you're comfortable and that's the kind of idea i like with my guests too you know when when i do talk to them in person is i want them to to be comfortable in their environment that way they're not like thinking that oh shit i gotta put up a front or i gotta do this or think this you know i gotta act a certain way yeah you know be like home yeah that's what i prefer for my guests is to just feel like they can just be themselves and now that's what honestly that's what the point of podcasting is really i I feel like a lot Mm -hmm. of people who do um if people do put up fronts while podcasting, it's, it's kind of, like, cheesy, you know? <laughs> yeah, like, gosh, like, I just, it just doesn't seem right, you know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> Fake people, you know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it, it's a whole different topic, you know, having yeah. having podcasters, like, or people who, who've never done podcasting kind of just, like, feel that they have to put up a certain act. I, I don't want that with any of my guests at all. And to any listeners who are listening, if you do want to be on the either of our podcasts, you know, feel free to just be yourselves. You know, it's yeah, it, it's just honestly it's just honest. It's honestly the best way to to create the best content. You know, when you gotta pretend to to be something or to show off something, it's it kind of ruins the the point of the podcast. Yeah, and and it ruins your image too, honestly. Like, because it it really shows like through camera and like just the way you talk, it really shows how how much you're like acting so are there any i guess guests that you'd like to work with not just guests but like any artist really in general is there anyone that you'd like to work with or have you reached out to anyone uh since your last episodes like i said i I would want to have you on my podcast in the future um i do also want uh a lot of other like musical artists like uh kali universe and chinchilla like you've had and just uh i really want uh duo more the actor duo more Oh yeah, I, I reached out yeah. to him on Instagram one time. He uh, he was nice about it. He he didn't exactly turn me down, but he was. It was before he started making the uh, the statements where you got to reach to his manager. It was just before that. Oh, so he was oh, like, "Wow, he's got a manager now." Yeah, I think that's what it is. Cause like, uh, oh, wow. when I reached out to him on Instagram, and shout out to Duo Moa, man, cause he, that guy's breaking barriers for Hong people too. He's holding it down for us, man. Yeah. <laughs> Cause like uh, I I got to meet him the first time in Michigan when they were doing Grant Torino. Um, oh wow! Okay. Yeah, for for listeners, I think I talk about this story on episode six. Or I have a cousin who's a part of Grant Torino. He was one of the gangbangers in the movie. Oh okay. So I got to meet 
the other actors because of him because he was like hey rick you know we're going to dave and busters which is like a adult arcade um you know we're gonna meet up there with the grand Torino actors and uh you know, I want to see if you want to go. At this at this time, I was only like in eighth grade, so I was oh, so wow. nervous to to even <laughs> see. Like to me, these guys were like superstars. So I'm like, holy shit! Yeah, man, you guys sure. are in ho- you guys are in a real Hollywood film. You know, especially working with guys like Clint Eastwood too. I'm like, yeah. damn. So it was so nerve wracking to meet these guys. And I, I remember my first interaction with Duomo. We were we walk into the the, the arcade. My cousin greets everyone. I get I meet B who plays um who plays Tao. I meet Ani Her who plays uh the the sister. And then mm. Duo comes up from behind, and he's like, hey, what's up, man? He's, like, super outgoing, and it kind of threw me off because I wasn't expecting <laughs> that. So he had, like, a lot of energy c- coming from him. And so I was really shy when I met him. But, uh, yeah, it was nice to meet him. And then, um, yeah, now I'm now seeing – like, I've seen some of his uh, highlight reels, like his acting reels and stuff. Um, and uh, now that he's in Mulan, too, it's, like, it's, it's crazy to see how far he's come with acting – and yeah, like when I reached out to him, it was just before all this Mulan press stuff was happening. So he yeah. was like, he was like, yeah, man, I'd love to be on the podcast, but you know, with this, with the press and stuff, I'm going to be busy. So he didn't exactly shut me down, but you know, he did it in a more nice way. <laughs> yeah. Professional. <laughs> yeah. He was, <laughs> yeah. he was professional about it. So I was like, okay, it's, it's whatever. And you know, I, I think I've seen, I, I didn't listen to all of the interviews, but I've seen him on certain or on other Hmong podcasts too. Um, oh, okay, but but I think I'm not gonna say it's for sure. But I think he he does want us to re- or anyone really who's re- trying to reach out to him to reach out to his manager first. That way they can set up like appointments um, and all that stuff. Okay. Yeah, but was there anyone else that you had in mind too? I, I think you mentioned um, Kalia, Chinchilla, Duo Moa. Was there anyone else? Um, uh, pretty much anybody, honestly. Like anybody that has a passion, you know. Because for me, it's like um. It's great to have somebody else to talk about their passion and how they did it or like how they're still like they're doing it and showing their journey and showing how easy it is just to start. You know what I mean? If you thought like about if you're, Oh I'm sorry, go ahead. <laughs> oh, my bad. Like like if you're like if you're thinking about like like singing, right? We have so many artists and right now it's just like just record it off your phone really, you know, and all you really need to do is start, you know. It's just, I think it's just for me is like just showing how easy it is and not how easy it is to be to get big but then showing how easy it is to find your passion and how easy it is to start it you know yeah i think it, when it comes down to it it's just like if you're even willing to start something yeah know? um because i don't know how you started your podcast but, but for me when i first started i didn't have the equipment that i have now and i'm not saying that my equipment's any great it's just like i have better equipment than i did when i first started a year ago you know i had like everything was recorded mm-hmm. through my phone i had like a, a road adapter with like clip-on mics and uh you know i was recording through that i had to borrow my sister's laptop from time to time when i was making like facebook calls and put the clip-on mic next to the speaker you know it wasn't even through like what i use now with the yeah. pre-recorded programs and so it's a huge game changer and i feel like a lot of artists or content creators and are just kind of afraid to do that first step yeah, that, it's a lot of research that you have to do, you know, like before, like you had your own uh, way of doing it. I had, um, before I even had the podcast, I just had uh, my my fashion channel, right? So it was pretty much just my phone, <laughs> just recorded off my phone. And a lot of it was just off the phone. And then I had to save a lot of money and do a lot of research to get the most uh, affordable equipment for my podcast so my i have two mics and uh audio interface and some mic stands and all of it was under 200 dollars or just about 200 dollars. so i had to save money do a lot of research read up on a lot of reviews on these equipment and watch a lot of uh, videos on these equipment on how it works and what's the pros and what's the cons and what's the next best thing or all of that. So a like a lot of it was just research, strictly research and saving up for it. And what are your thoughts on that? Like for folks who who don't want to do that. Like I know I know there's like content creators out there who are just trying to, you know, um, take shortcuts and and not really really study the art of what they're trying mm. to do. You know, because like it, it's it's something that I've been seeing recently where there are artists out there who do have you know potential to be great, but they're just not willing to put in the work. 
or put in like time to study or even learn programs and stuff like that or even editing you know what are, what are your thoughts on that like with artists trying to do shortcuts and all that honestly i mean it might sound harsh but honestly that they don't deserve the praise and the love that like other artists put in the work for example like david yang he puts in uh day in and day out he's been putting out music ever since ever since i was like in middle school which was like almost a decade ago <laughs> so for sure over 10 years he's been putting music out probably every week every month every year so if you're not like that if you don't eat sleep sweat bleed cry about your passion and you expect yourself to make it to the top there's just no way right there's just no way that's happening i mean you might get lucky right it's possible to get lucky but then that's just one in a million you might as well go get some lottery tickets you know and i agree i agree with that 100 percent. you know it's a uh... I mean, those who do get some sort of breakthrough, it's about how do you maintain that? You know, I think that's what really kind of tests content creators yeah. too. Like, like even now for me, like I'm not saying like any of my content's big or anything, but when I do land a, you know, a, a good guest or even land some good content, it's it's hard when you kind of drop from that energy. You know, when you get like the post yeah. Comic Con blues, like when you get post Comic Con blues, you're out of that energy, you're out of that high intense level same thing with guests for me when i land a good guest and then after that i when i start trailing off and i, I start coming back down and man it, it's it's a real tester you know you, you, you get to see if do you still want to do what you want to do because like now yeah and, and when you start comparing like your other content with the, you know with your best content with your worst content it's like it really it does get get the best of you at times yeah exactly and a lot of other people they're going to be like oh that wasn't even as good as the last one you know, and that's, that's going to mess up with you too. You know, if like, you don't always try to up yourself from your last, um, like your last video, your last song, or just your last content in general, you know, people are always going to go back to the best one or like your best, like Gary Vee always says like at bat, you know what I mean? You're always as good as your, your last at bat, nothing more. What are your thoughts on like content creators always looking at numbers? You know, I, I, I'm kind of like hypocritical at this too because like I think some episodes I was like, you know, I don't really care about the subscriptions or the uh, likes and follows. But then at times like I do talk about like, damn, I really yeah. wish I, need, I can get more subscribers. <laughs> so yeah, what are your thoughts on that, man? Because like that, the numbers game, people say it's not – it's easy to just ignore. But man, sometimes it's really not when you look at your no, numbers and it does get pretty crazy like when you start comparing your, your craft mm -hmm. and then like you start doubting what you want. So w what are your thoughts on like just – you know the number game comparing you know your craft with others what do you have to say on, on that topic to be honest like i do play in, play into it too like you know i've been i've been doing youtube five six years now and i i only have 77 subscribers because like i kept switching my my, my stuff around you know and i didn't want it i didn't stick to one niche it, it does like kind of like hurt me to be honest like not seeing the amount of views that um that I, I feel like I should be getting, but then that's just like my, I guess like you could say like entitlement, right? But then like how how you should be seeing it, honestly, like you didn't get that many views because you probably didn't promote it that much, right? Or you didn't get that many views that you expected because you didn't put much as much effort into that video as you should have, right? So I think how you should be seeing it is just making it better next time because we can make all the videos that we want. It does matter some to a point, right? Uh, subscribers and viewership does matter because that, that stuff will tell you if you're actually doing good or not. But then honestly, like, you should be seeing it as, like, a motivator to be like, I got 20 views on my video last week, so next time I should improve on this or promote it this way to see if it could go up from there. Yeah, those are really great points that you made because I feel like a lot of content creators don't even talk about this aspect of, the, the game itself, you know, I guess you can say, like, it's it's something that a lot of content creators don't want to admit to, because, like, uh, you know, I, again, it comes to, it's it's a bit of a pride thing, too, you know, it's like, yeah, uh, it is, because it kind of exposes a bit of a weak side, it, it shows how vulnerable some, someone is, and I, mm -hmm. and it, it's weird how, like, just simple number games, and, like, from, like, Instagram to Facebook to YouTube, you know, how, how sensitive people got over the years and and yeah, how, it's, man, it's, how it's led to like even bullying with just followers you know some kids were trying to i guess almost committing suicide at one point because they were being bullied wow. for not having followers now i don't know if that's a real story but if that is true man that that is terrible that's, yeah that's crazy <laughs> you know because like it, it's gone to this point where like 
how even adults, man, like we we look at these these like numbers as if like it it matters. Um, I don't mm. know if you've seen like you watch Black Mirror. No, I don't. On Netflix, there's the show called Black Mirror. It's like a UK um, series. It's uh, episodic, so each episode is its own story. And it's about like how technology is kind of like changing our society and changing how people are. And there's this one episode in season three. I believe it's the first episode. It's about, um, it's kind of like what China's doing now. It's like the social interaction rating system. Like if you like someone or you like what they did, you give them a rating. And if like you have... Oh. A- <laughs> And it's like, uh, yeah, so like this, this episode's about that, you know, like everyone has like a social media account and everyone starts off at a certain number. And if you do good things and are, you know, kind of like a kiss ass and when you people rate you, you get higher ratings overall. And like, it kind of shows you like the beginning of how good it looks at first, you know, how everyone's like, yeah, man, we're so nice to everyone. And, you know, the high society people who are like five stars, all hang out. And then if you don't have like a certain amount of stars, you can't go to certain places. You can't go to, you can't do certain jobs. And like the, the main character, she uh, she starts like at first you see how how I guess fake she is. You know, she's just rating everyone so she can get rated too. And then throughout the story, like her number starts to drop, and she starts kind of like losing it. And like at the very end of this episode, she finally goes to this event where it's where she's not even qualified to go to. And like it just shows how crazy it's it's very like uh, m- metaphorical, and it's also like very real life kind of based where you see where people want to be approved so much to where they'll do anything for it honestly i think it's just the wrong way of seeing it you know what i mean like it's just like you said it's crazy how like how that's going to be the norm of society yeah i i think what china was i don't know if they're still doing it but when i heard that china was doing that rating system i thought that was crazy as hell because like if let's say if america was to implement that shit Oh my God, man! I think I think society would blow up. It's crazy that how the system itself is um, just showing how society's changing with just social media and with yeah. the internet. I don't know. I can't say much about it because I didn't. I don't know too much. I just know of what I've read and heard. Um, mm. But hopefully, we you just know that it's crazy. <laughs> yeah, we hopefully we don't get to that point of where people really rely on like social media to just um, approve like jobs and the way of how we live in oh, general yeah. that was a bit of a tangent there but um my channel's always about like that you know <laughs> just going off yeah but I, I wanted to ask you too though i, I know you've had some mong guests on your on your podcast but have you thought about like reaching out to i guess like outside or different communities too to bring to your to your show yeah honestly like i'm i'm really down for anybody I'm like I'm more laid back. Honestly, your setup is like really professional and stuff. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, it's really professional. It's really nice how you do all that. Um, but for me, it's like I'm just really laid back, and sometimes it sometimes it's bad. Like I can see why it's like a bad thing, but then like for me, it's like I just want to have a conversation. You know, have a conversation. If it steers this way, then it goes that way. If it goes this way, it goes that way. But then the main thing what I like to talk about is like bringing it back to just passion and helping other others like find passion you know so you know i honestly don't really don't really care uh if i bring in anybody else um i would love to bring in anybody else you know because obviously like i've only had three guests so (laughs) i'm kind of desperate for anybody right now (laughs) (laughs) i mean it does take time but like from what i've gone through it's just i think what's best for any podcaster really is to just work with anyone who's willing to work with you whether yeah they have zero to 10 subscribers or 100 million like i think if anyone is willing to work with you that's the best thing to go about it you know like how we were just talking about a few minutes earlier about you know just ratings and subscriptions and promoting and all that's great and all but i feel like you kind of lose the genuine content when it comes to like oh man i got someone big on the podcast you know it's it's great for your numbers and everything but like is it is that gonna be something that you're only going to stick with now because like you never know one person that you have on the podcast that only has like five subscribers but they bring in amazing content yeah and exactly I, so i i think for me whoever is willing to work with you is it's something that we can just be like all right let's just set it up and get it done because you, you never yeah, know exactly because mm-hmm. like um this episode that we have we're having right now like whether a lot of people listen to it or don't hopefully that this what we talk about kind of reaches out to someone who is hopefully this helps motivate someone to realize like oh shoot you know it doesn't it doesn't matter who i talk to or it doesn't matter who i work with just to work with anyone 
Yeah, you know? as long as you work. <laughs> yeah, you know. Yeah. And, you know, I, 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 I see this a lot, too, where, you know, a lot of artists say consistency is key. And, um, mm-hmm. and that's where I kind of, like, reach out to so many people, too, you know. And I, I want to have a consistent um, setting, consistent um, episodes and whatnot. And I think any any artist really should do that and stay consistent. I think that's a hard part, especially in the Hmong community. You know, I don't want I don't mean to, like, point them out specifically. And if there are Hmong content creators who do disagree, please contact me as well on Facebook or on my email, which will be, um, which I'll talk about it at the end of the episode. But um, if there is anyone that does disagree, then let me know because I'd like to hear your points too. But I do feel like a lot of the Hmong community itself, as much as we all support each other and grow our content together, I feel like sometimes there are some good artists out there who don't have that consistency. Like, there's so yeah. much good talent out there, and then they just get the one-hit wonder, or they just do the one thing, and that's it. It sucks to see, like, man, so, there's some people with potential out there who don't chase that, or who don't, who don't pursue grind. that. Yeah, you know, exactly. Like, mm-hmm. they just get the one big view, like, all right, I'm, that's it, I'm good. And that's they drop it off. That's something that I, I feel like a lot of us in the Hmong community, too, need, especially if we want to branch out as a community and let people know that, okay, we're here, you know, because, I, I, for example, K-pop and, like, you know, high music and all that stuff is so big and international but that's because like they have so many people grinding and staying consistent and working yeah. at it you know they're not just doing one hit wonders and dropping off and uh, yeah exactly and i think right now is like right now honestly is the perfect time for Hmong people to show their show their talent and grind it out you know yes um like like you said like Kali universe uh being mainstream like ever since i've heard her um a long time ago before she came back to music and before she took her break, um, uh, when she used to do like used to do golf covers uh, in her bathroom and stuff, I used to listen to her all day, you know, because she was that good. And all of a sudden she stopped, and I was like wondering why she stopped. And then when she came back, she came back with a banger and went mainstream. You know what I mean? So it's just like we have the talent, right? Our, our us Hmong people, we have the talent. We have the David Yang. We have, have uh, Kali Universe Chinchilla. Uh, LP, you know, we have we have everybody already. It's just the fact of pushing it to the next level. That's why I always say like, if I ever did music, I would not really like. I would go with the Moon community, but then like not really go with the Moon community. If that makes sense. Yeah. Um. One of the guests I had, Kinang Vang, he talked about that too. You know, like he he doesn't mind working with the Moon community, but the end game or the goal is to branch out and be mm-hmm. mainstream you know i, I didn't that yeah. that's honestly that's the real thing like a lot of Hmong folks don't want to admit it but and as much as we love our community being mainstream or breaking out of our community and reaching out to multiple communities who can understand what our content is that's the goal for anyone that's creating yeah content. exactly yeah and i talked about this in my in my last uh video too like just going out of your comfort zone like for sure it's easy being being at the top of the Hmong uh, industry, right? And you're comfortable. So obviously you might want to stay there, right? Because it's comfortable, it's safe. But then, like I said, like, you can achieve so much more if you go out of your comfort zone, you know? Break out of that uh, Hmong, like, just the Hmong community uh, industry. Because you don't know, like, what else is there that you can achieve if you just stop right there, you know what I mean? And the Hmong community isn't, isn't even the highest point that we're able to reach. Like, Kalea Universe just proved that Moon Community is not the highest peak of music or uh, talent. So I think there's a lot of things that us Moon people, us uh, content creators, um, have to work on as uh, Moon people. But then it's a good it's a good uh, time to start right now. So who's like who's ever listening right now, and if you want to start a podcast or start making music or doing like a fashion channel. I know a lot of people are into makeup. You guys want to start something like that. Like right now is a perfect time to get out of your comfort zone and just do it because everybody, everybody that's seeing uh, people pop off, they're, they're popping off for a reason. You know, they've started way back, way back when we were all kids and they've been grinding it out ever since, you know, so that could be you right now. If you started way back, right. That could have been them. So if you start right now, right now is a perfect time just to build a mold and go up from here. That is how you should do things, man. Continue to grind and continue to just don't stop working for yeah. um, for your content and for your craft. Um, you now, what are your thoughts on like uh, crowdfunding and and you know like things like Patreon and stuff like that for 
Hmong art artists and content creators. I, I I've seen se- several Hmong artists who are slowly using this crowdfunding mm. um, tech for their own use for when they make their own videos and stuff like that. And, yeah. And you know it it, it is. It is a hard thing to ask in the Hmong community. As much as we support each other and share each other's content, you know, for example, when it comes to like asking for quote unquote donations or some sort of thing, like Hmong folks don't really do that too much. They would rather give you the money for like a CD or for a book or something like, like that. For like a shirt or something. Yeah, yeah, instead of just like, here you go, here's like five bucks for your content. Like, what are your thoughts on that? Because I know a lot of Hmong folks are slowly doing crowdfunding. Um,. I guess for me, it's like, I don't really mind it. Like, you know, it's your content. You do what you want with it, you know? Uh, but for me personally, I wouldn't I wouldn't do that. Or, like, I'm not going to do that because it's just, like, I'm, like, a big Gary Vee fan, right? So you, you have to you have to give out free content, give out so much value they're willing to pay you for your content. Donations is fine, like, and stuff like that, like, I get it, you know, small, small channels like us is like, don't make any money from it, you know what I mean? So it's just like a hobby. People see it as like a hobby or just like a side project, you know what I mean? But then we're grinding it out for the future stuff, right? We're not grinding it out to make money right now. We're grinding it out to, to add value to our content, add value to our name, add value to our brand to the point where in the future, if somebody wants us to be on their channel or like, uh, somebody wants us just to sponsor them like it, it costs money right so I think right now we we don't we don't really have value like for me myself I'm not talking about your channel but like for me myself my channel doesn't really have value right now because it's um it's just such a small channel you know what I mean and it's such like uh, still like five five to six years for my channel is still pretty short in like YouTube timeline you know so it's like I pretty much have done nothing <laughs> yeah, no I, I I don't blame you either like my, my the net worth of my stuff's not really worth anything really um, I, I feel like I, I've just been lucky I guess you know when it comes to like some of the content I've made I, I shock myself mm-hmm. at times where I'm like oh shit I really did this you know <laughs> and, yeah. like I'm still like taken back by it when I think about it like you know, um, one of my previous episodes, I had William Hung on the podcast, and I was like, "Holy shit, man!" Like when I think about that, and it's only like a thirty-minute episode, but still, it's just the fact that I got someone like him on the podcast, and I'm just yeah. I mean, like obviously, like away. I mean, it's, it's it's crazy, right? When you get somebody like you didn't even expect, you know, it's it's crazy. But then, like going back to like the um, crowdfunding and stuff like that, like honestly, like if you want to do it, you just have you just have to prove yourself worthy of like for like you have to add value to your content all the time like they're just not like people are just not going to give you money right because just because you know so like you always have to add value to your content make sure like the ones that's like um what's that website that does that uh patreon right yeah yeah patreon and there's yeah, like a bunch patreon of other stuff that. too i think if like if you do have like those people that um like gives you like five dollars every month or something like that like those people are the people that you want to like make sure they're getting the most out of your channel or your content because those are the people that like support you the most I mean, and that's that's dope like if you have like stuff like that like that's cool but then like for me myself it's like I don't really want to ask money from people you know so it's just I guess it's just perspectives you know yeah it's good it's a good way to, to look at it too because you want to kind of just grow things on your own and not rely on the income of other fans or followers too and mm-hmm. I, I can see that uh, i don't know if you're familiar with like the facebook comedians like kev on stage and patrick cloud oh yeah yeah they use crowdfunding in a really great way i i bought kev on stage's like steps to like it's like an online class or something like that it's it's a it's a great tool to to learn and use and to see how kev on stage did his material and how he used the internet mm-hmm. and social media to grow his income and stuff like that but you know it's different for certain content creators too who don't relate to that because you know comedy is such a huge thing in its own and then yeah. they branched off with comedy to like the videos to podcasting and stuff like that so that's how they grew their content but to just jump in with podcasting it takes a lot more time because it's yeah. still new and surprisingly there's still a lot of people today who don't even know what podcasting is yeah exactly mm-hmm. before we do wrap up 
was there anything you'd like to say or plug or shout out or anything like that? Um, no, man. Shout out to you for having me on, man. I did not expect you to actually just watch my stuff and, you know, have me on your podcast. You know, I'm a big fan of you, your uh, content as well. Uh, I do listen to, to all your stuff uh, when I drive back from, like, Eau Claire to Appleton. So it's like a three-hour drive. So I do listen to your stuff, too. Yeah, other thank than you that, that, man. Yeah, other than that, follow me in Platinum Podcast because I do need the subscribers. I do need to know who's watching me. You know, last time I checked, 60% of my viewers weren't even subscribed to me. So <laughs> subscribe to me, guys. And also subscribe to the Sport of the Force podcast. This guy's dope. I want to say thank you to LP and Baymon Productions for letting me use their tracks for the podcast. You know, I always got to shout these guys out because they let me use their content. And, uh, you know, definitely if you ever want to use their music too uh austin just reach out to lp on facebook and you know it's, it's very simple just um message him <laughs> yeah because yeah, like yeah for sure yeah and uh thank you again for this opportunity and for everyone who's listening please subscribe to platinum podcast and uh have a great day you guys If you enjoyed this episode, make sure to follow, like, share, subscribe, and rate Spoiler Force Podcast. For comments, questions, or criticism, you can email me at rickyvang92 at gmail.com or message me on Instagram at instagram.com slash rickyvang92.